Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com. It is day two of Dubtendo week. Dubtendo is an album that I am a producer, composer, arranger, mixer on, along with my buddy Joe Lowry, who is the main producer, composer, uh, all of the things. Uh, really, really brilliant dude. And uh, that's coming out Friday. So this one is one of my favorite records. I want to go over basically kind of everything that's going on to a certain extent, but really the main theme of this is going to be using delays in place of reverb. That's a really undersold idea. You can do so much with delays and pretty much not every, every reverb that you're hearing in this is going to be a delay, but pretty darn close. So uh, this is a Castlevania dub fusion record. Let's jump on in, give it a listen. Okay, cool. So time to start breaking down what some of these tracks are. So first of all, before I get into this, I have to explain a little bit of the process that Joe and I t typically will tend to use. For most of the records, the way it would go is Joe would make the basic idea of the record, and then he would send it over to me to finish out the arrangement or even maybe make the arrangement and then also create a lot of the effects layers that make dub music kind of what it is, because dub music is really taking music that already exists, making a new dub of it, and in the process of making that dub using effects layers to create an entirely new vision and musical idea with that. So we kind of recreated that sort of sense of passing thing, one thing into another, just through the handout process. And there's a couple of records where it went the other way, where I did the production and composition, then I gave it over to Joe, and he finished it out and, and made it work that way. And, you know, it's a really cool process, actually. I really encourage you guys to try doing something in this kind of a collaborative fashion. But I'm saying that to say this because I'm about to take out a couple of the effects that I created and you're going to feel like the production just isn't really what it needs to be, but you, I want it to be understood that that was intentional to this particular production process. So I'm going to take out the delay that I have on the drums and I'm going to take out the delay and distortion that I have on the bass and now I'm going to play it from right where the first little verse section kicks in. Okay, let's bring these back in now, real quick. Okay, so what what is going on with those two tracks? Let's start with the what I've called the drum spring. And basically what this is, is it's a delay that's being used to kind of emulate like a really cheap spring reverb. So I'm gonna solo it up. We've got Echo Boy here, and I've got it time dependent, but when we're talking about like very, very fast echoes, these are so quick that it almost doesn't necessarily need to be in time. It just, it felt good in time, so I kept it that way. But basically, I've got a 30 second dotted 30 second on the left, and then I've got a triplet 30 second on the right. And the reason why one's dotted and the other one's triplet is not because I want something that's specific to those rhythms. The idea here was just to have something where the sides were acting differently so that it gave a spread to the sound. I've got the feedback up pretty high. When you're using such fast echoes, typically you need a you know longer feedback so that it actually tails long enough for you to be able to hear it. 
And then the real key to making this work is using a delay that has a diffusion control. Diffusion will granulate the sound, break it up, and make it feel smeared. If you don't have that, it ends up sounding like this. Which is still a cool sound. I think that that's a very usable sound. I think I very easily could have gone with that, maybe filtered out some more of the highs and created this kind of like ricocheting bullety kind of sound that's going on. And I think that that would have been really cool and would have worked really well. Uh, but what I chose to do was apply some diffusion to the echoes and basically apply enough diffusion so that even the loudest echoes smeared into what felt more like reverb. I'll do some partial diffusion and you'll hear what happens to the sounds. This can be a cool way to create that kind of ricochet effect, but also have it have some kind of an ambience to it. So now instead of like dry echoes, it almost sounds more like echoes reverberating in a cave, which I think is kind of a cool sound too. And this would sound really, really cool on like less transient material, like, like a uh, distorted guitar or something like that, or just like something rounder that still has some degree of a percussive element to it. Uh, but where I have it is so that it's diffuse enough where it never really feels exactly like echoes. And it just ends up kind of sounding like, like a cheap, cool, colorful reverb. And that's exactly what I wanted for this record. Uh, I thought that that worked perfectly. Underneath it, by the way, these are just chops of the drums that are each going into very individual delay throws so that I can get like little hits off of them. Um, this really cool sound, if I take this off, and take off the EQ, it's just a chop of like the drum and crash hit. And then the first thing I'm doing is I'm filtering out the kick. And then the magic of course is happening here in Echo Boy, where I'm using a variation of the Echoplex, and what's giving it that like really modulated sound here is this wobble section, where it's changing the pitch pretty quickly in order to create something that kind of has like not a flangey effect, but like almost a flangey effect. It's a it's a sound that shows up in like a lot of old animes, and I I just I love that sound. It's so cool. Uh, anyway, moving on. That was sort of an aside, but I thought it'd be fun to point out. Let's jump on down to the bass here. So the bass, I have Echo Boy again. I have it on as an insert as the first thing in the chain because I want it to get affected by the distortion that's gonna come later. But this one here is, this is more rhythmically specific because once you start getting into the realm of like 16th notes, the ear can definitely pick out whether or not it's off beat or on beat. So I'm using a 16th note triplet on the left and a 16th on the right, and that was partially for the rhythmic feel, but it's subtle enough where it's not it's not so dominant as a rhythmic device, but you still kind of feel it. All right, so here's before and after. And it almost creates the effect of it being like, a cab that was mic'd from like a few feet away. Like it almost feels like you're picking up room tone off of the bass and it's stretching it out on the sides. I'll, uh, I'll exaggerate it a little bit just so we can hear what's going on. And I think as, since this is very transformative music, even if I went this extreme with it, it could actually possibly have sounded really cool, uh, but I didn't. So here we are. <laughs> 
and you know pretty pretty basic stuff there though overall so it's basically being used as like a room tone slash widener kind of a thing and then the next step is decapitator transforming the sound into something a lot woollier giving it some crusty overtones <laughs> I like the triode setting here because it's pretty woolly sounding. It's not quite as woolly sounding as the pentode, but it's it's good. it's a little sharper than the pentode sounding. But I mean, either of those actually probably would have worked. And then these next three cues that I've got going on here is all just me trying to bring out the distortion as much as possible before it starts to sound bad. <laughs> By the way, do you notice that once I've brought the distortion out, that widening effect on the bass becomes a lot more obvious without the widening? With. So we get a nice, really cool stereo spread on the bass. And I, I want to point that out also in the light of like, a lot of the times I think we're kind of afraid to use delays or reverbs on low frequency stuff like kicks and bass. And it's true, a lot of the times it is going to sound really muddy and pretty bad, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't experiment with it. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it because sometimes the coolest stuff that we get is from doing something that typically is not something you would want to do. Obviously, if this was like a Motown type of a record or whatever, I would want something that was like bone dry you know, a lot of records for the bass, we want something that's bone dry, but this is transformative. So, I mean, there isn't necessarily any set rules as long as we're being experimental and it feels good and it's fun. I mean, that's what we want to be doing. Uh, moving down here to the guitars. So there's a guitar and a guitar reverb. This second track here with guitar rig is a guitar reverb. I'll play the guitar by itself a little bit. That's just Joe playing, because he's good at guitar. And then I have this reverb here. And this reverb is, I, I tried it with a cleaner reverb. I tried it with just a delay with the diffusion. I didn't like any of that. I wanted something that was really, really colorful, like really, really colorful. So I've got a tape echo going into an amp simulator and then grain delays. And so again, this is all delays, but it ends up feeling like reverb. Just sounds like a really quirky spring, and together they sound like this. All that color and personality really, really colors up the guitar really nicely. And then here again, in this guitar solo section here, I've got delays as the reverb. Cool, so I want to wrap this up with a question for you guys, by the way. One of the things that I did in this arrangement is that I kept this lead melody here kind of dryish, monoish. Like there is a little bit of EQ on it and things like that, but there's no like pizzazz to it. I kept it kind of in the middle so that once the actual verse opened up, it felt really big. But I'm wondering, maybe I could have done something better where I could have like jazzed up the sound of it, you know, made it wider, made it more effecty. So I'm gonna play the intro again. And I, the question I have for you is, do you like it where having it kind of plain Jane mono in the center and then allowing the verse to kind of open up and feel a little bit bigger, was that the wave? Or would this have been better if I had done some kind of a creative effect to really like just spice up this lead right from the get-go? So I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, if you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification. If you've got any questions about anything that you've seen or you just want to say hi, jump on into that comment section below. As I said before, Dubtendo is dropping on Friday. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. 
and I will catch you next time.